All right, guys, let's take some time to practice some basic consumer and producer surplus questions. If you haven't done so already, grab a copy of this worksheet. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if you haven't done so already, take a look at the producer and consumer uh, video that I did explaining the basics on this concept. The first four questions are pretty much just some definition type questions, you know, looking at the different wording that might exist in these types of questions. The first one asks, explain why the demand curve can also be considered the marginal benefit curve. Now, consumers will purchase something if the marginal benefit is equal to or greater than the marginal cost. We know this. So as price goes down, the quantity demanded is going to go up because new consumers are going to join the market as that price gets lower and lower and lower. So at any given point on the curve, it represents who we call the marginal buyer. He is the first person that's going to leave the market if price goes any higher. So in a sense, the marginal benefit curve is also our demand curve. Now, what is consumer surplus? It's the extra satisfaction that we receive beyond what we paid for the item. So if I pay $10 for something and I get $15 worth of satisfaction out of buying it, I'm getting $5 in extra satisfaction. That's our consumer surplus. So number three, Maddie is willing to pay $90 for a pair of jeans and the price of jeans is only $75. So what is Maddie's consumer surplus on the pair of jeans? $90, that's what her willingness to buy and then we subtract that $75, the price that she actually paid. Turns out to be her consumer surplus is $15, the extra satisfaction beyond what she paid for the item that she received. Now number four, assuming that Maddie's demand for the jeans does not change, how will an increase in the price of jeans affect the consumer surplus Maddie receives from it? So maybe if this price of jeans goes up to $90, it completely wipes out her consumer surplus. But either way, it's either gonna reduce it or completely eliminate that consumer surplus that she has. For number five, we're focusing on consumer surplus. So we have our model on the right, downward sloping demand curve in the market for cheeseburgers. So question A says, what is the marginal benefit of the 10th cheeseburger? Now the 10th cheeseburger is purchased at $8. So the marginal buyer comes in as that price goes down to $8. He's not willing to pay any more than $8 for it because his marginal benefit is exactly eight. So the marginal benefit of the 10th cheeseburger, $8. What is the maximum price the consumer is willing to pay for the 10th cheeseburger? Because he gets $8 in satisfaction from it and will leave the market if it goes any higher, he is only willing to pay $8, not a penny more for that cheeseburger. Now, if the cheeseburger is $4, what is the consumer surplus of the 30th cheeseburger? Now, remember, a lot of these questions just get you understanding the wording. The 30th cheeseburger is purchased by that particular marginal consumer. As the price goes down to $4, he comes into the market and decides he's going to buy it because his marginal benefit is exactly $4. So the 30th cheeseburger at $4 gets zero consumer surplus because he is the marginal buyer. He is the guy that's going to leave. He is the guy that values it at exactly $4 and is getting nothing extra out of this. So zero is the consumer surplus. Now D, if the price of a cheeseburger is $2, what is the consumer surplus on all cheeseburgers consumed? So in this case, we want to look at this whole triangle right here. We want to look at all the consumer surplus received by all the consumers when the price is $2. Because there are people that are willing to pay 10, there are people that are willing to pay 6, there are people that are willing to pay 4, but the price is 2. So everybody's getting a little extra satisfaction out of this, extra surplus, except that marginal buyer. But the, the size of this triangle represents total consumer surplus. So what we need to do here is find the area of the triangle, base times height divided by two, one, one half base times height. So our height is eight, our, our base is 40, divide that by two, we end up with $160 worth of consumer surplus. Now if the price of a cheeseburger is $8, our area is much smaller, okay? There's still people getting extra satisfaction, but there's a lot smaller of a market here. Only 10 cheeseburgers are going to be consumed at this point. But we still can figure out the area of this triangle. 2 times 10 divided by 2, we end up with a consumer surplus of $10. Number 6 looks at producer surplus. So once again, we're in the market for cheeseburgers, but we got our upward sloping supply curve. First question, what is the marginal cost of the 20th cheeseburger? So we are looking at this particular point right here. The quantity supplied at $6 is 20 so the marginal seller here, he comes into the market just as that price gets up to $6. His marginal cost is exactly $6 at this point. 
Otherwise, if it goes any lower, he's going to leave the market. So the marginal cost of the 20th cheeseburger is $6. Now, B, what is the minimum price of the 20th cheeseburger that would, that would be supplied? So how, how low can we go and still get that 20th cheeseburger? Because his marginal cost at the 20th cheeseburger is $6, the least he's willing to supply it at is $6. Otherwise, his marginal benefit would be less than his marginal cost, and it wouldn't make sense for him to make that decision. It has to be at least equaling his marginal cost to, to make that decision. For C, if the price, of a che or the price is $4 per cheeseburger, what is the producer's surplus on the 10th cheeseburger? Once again, here we're looking at the single point. At $4, 10 cheeseburgers are being supplied. So the marginal seller is bringing in that 10th cheeseburger. His marginal cost is $4. He is getting zero extra satisfaction. He is getting zero producer surplus on this particular cheeseburger. D asks, if the price of a, is $6 per cheeseburger, what is the producer surplus for the total quantity of cheeseburgers produced? So here we want to find the area of the triangle again. So at $6, the quantity in the market is 20. So we would go the height of the triangle, $4 times 20, our base, divided by 2, we end up with a producer surplus of $40. Now, if the price of the cheeseburger is $10, what's the producer surplus? So in this case, a much larger area. We have a height of 8 and a base of 40 divided by 2. Our market size is 40. And because of this, we have a producer surplus of $160. A few more definition and wording type questions. First off, what is the marginal seller? The producer slash supplier, okay, however you want to word it, that will leave the market first if the price goes any lower. So he is producing at cost, basically. The price of the product is $6. His marginal cost is $6. If the price goes any lower, it's not worth for him to do it. So he would leave the market. What is true for a producer to obtain a producer surplus from the sale of a unit or of a good? The price has to be higher than the marginal cost. All right, so if you're in a market where the price is higher than the marginal cost, the producer is going to get a little surplus. If it's at or lower, he's not going to get any surplus. What is allocative efficiency? Now, this is a term or also social optimal uh, price or socially optimal quantity. Uh, it's the point where the consumer and the producer surplus is maximized. All right, under most circumstances, it's where supply and demand intersect. It's where demand equals supply. It's where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. And the marginal cost of the last item produced is equal to the marginal benefit of the last item consumed. Now, it's a very important wording on that. For number 10, I'm going to include the model. Not necessary, but just to help explain it a little bit better. When less than the efficient amount of a good is produced, how does the marginal benefit of the last unit produced compare to its marginal cost? So when we are at socially optimal or allocative efficiency, we are producing right where you know equilibrium occurs, where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied, where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. We know this. This is going to maximize our consumer and producer surplus. It's going to give us the, the most total surplus that we possibly can have. All right, but under other circumstances, let's say that the price of the product is four dollars. Let's say the government comes in and puts a price ceiling or something like that and says you can only you can't go higher than four dollars. So at four dollars. Our quantity supplied is going to be 10. Now our quantity demanded will be higher, but there's only going to be 10 units to actually purchase. So in this case, if we're only producing four or 10 units here, the marginal benefit of the last unit consumed is going to be eight. The marginal cost of the last unit produced is going to be four. All right, so those don't match up. So our producer surplus would be this small little area on the bottom, and this would represent our consumer surplus because they're only paying $4 and they're getting a lot of extra satisfaction. But you notice on this model, we could this, this market could be a lot bigger. If they wouldn't have stopped price at $4, we would have been able to get up to the $6. So in this situation, we experience a little what we call deadweight loss. It's basically the loss of satisfaction when the market is interfered with. In this case, Government put a price ceiling on cheeseburgers at $4. So the marginal benefit of the last item consumed will be higher than the marginal cost of the last item produced. And that's how we word that one. You know, it's not, it, it's, it's just kind of giving a wording to explaining why we're not at the socially optimal 
quantity. Now, number 11, still market for cheeseburgers, but we're looking at both producer and consumer surplus and the idea of total surplus in the market. So the figure to the right shows the market for cheeseburgers. If the price of a cheeseburger is $6, what is the consumer surplus of the 20th cheeseburger? So our equilibrium quantity here is 20. All right, there is zero extra consumer surplus at the 20th cheeseburger. That's our marginal buyer right there. For B, if the price of a cheeseburger is $6, what is the producer surplus? So once again, that's our marginal seller at the 20th unit, so it's zero again. At equilibrium, at the quantity, the socially optimal or allocative efficient quantity, there is zero surplus at that particular point, but it maximizes the rest of it. So what is the allocative efficient quantity here? It's right at equilibrium at 20 units. All right, quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. The last unit consumed has a marginal benefit exactly of that as the marginal cost of the last unit produced. What is the equilibrium quantity in this situation? 20. And equilibrium quantity is the allocative efficient quantity in this example. Now, what is total surplus? Here, we have to look at the size of the entire triangle. The triangle's area, base times height, to, divided by two, is going to be 80. All right, guys, make sure you check out the follow-up video on this one, as well as other videos from the Unit 2 playlist. They're gonna be very beneficial for you to understand this entire concept. All right, guys, as usual, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.